What you're watching is the first ever Chinese American film named The Curse of Kuang Kuang. When the Far East mingles with the West, the film was produced in 1916 and directed independently by Mary E. Wong. This silent film is about a Chinese American couple who faces a cultural conflict with their traditional family. What this film signifies is the collision between the East and the West culture, and that is shown through many aspects of the film, from the clothes, the set, the interaction. However, the history behind this film are the struggles Wong has gone through in order to make this film alive, and what caused those struggles was the Chinese Exclusion Act. From 1882 to 1943, the Chinese Exclusion Act was passed to restrict Chinese immigration in America, and of course that deeply worsened the racial prejudice against Chinese people. As the film was produced during that time, Wong had to overcome the obstacles because of her identity as a Chinese woman. The Chinese Exclusion Act impacted Wong's film from the production, exposure, and the story. The production of this film included the set, the actors, and the story, but however, the story will be touched on later. When we look at the set, the environment is influenced by Chinese culture, and when we look at the actors, they are on Chinese. But when we start to look at the result of producing this film, you get to understand why Wong's had made this decision. Decision about the location of this film and actors. The Chinese Illusion Act has enlarged the decision by limiting her option. Wong didn't have that many options when producing this film. Starting with the setting, most of the film was based in a room but shot outside. In her biography from woman film, Beyoncé Project, the description of the film states this. In the viewing the curse, one is struck by the effective lighting of the scenes and the rubs, wavering in the wrist, suggesting that the film was shot outdoors. It's safe to say it is shot in a rabbit lace, probably her backyard. But what if we compare this film to an American film? This silent film is called Bouncing Baby and this comedic film was released at the same year when one film was released. The shot in Bass and Baby are mostly located in public. It was shot outside in the street with some vehicle moving apart, people walking on the sidewalks or rushing the street. Can one shoot scene like this in public? The answer is no, one can't. And that's it due to the Chinese Exclusion Act. The law has stripped all Chinese immigrants' rights and citizenship in America. There is a reason why Wong had only shot this scene privately. It is to avoid any conflict given the tension with Chinese people facing prejudice. And the Chinese Exclusion Act has escalated those tensions given the amount of aggression. Chinese people had to face, and the same limitation can be applied to choice of actors. One production of the film faced limitation due to the Chinese Exclusion Act because not only her budget was limited, but her rights as well. Unfortunately, not many people got to watch the film since its release date. From her biography, Wong's film was only screened twice over 90 years. The one in 1948 at the public screen in Berkeley, California in 1974, just for 70 family members. An article from a community project, Ked Art, states that Gregory Mark, whose great aunt is Mary E. Wong, brought the film to public in 2005. But during a time where Mary Wong tried to promote her film, Mark also says she got turned down by the distributors. So the reason why she struggled for so long is because of the racial stereotypes against Chinese people. What I'm about to show you is a cartoon that was made in 1886 which showed a symbolic figure of Uncle Sam kicking out racially depicted Chinese people. This cartoon was influenced by the Chinese Exclusion Act. As you can see, they were being kicked to leave the land. This 
is how the Westerners view Chinese people. This cartoon is only one of the many examples of what set the racist stereotypes for Chinese people, so it's not surprising that Wong has struggled to promote her film, since her efforts were silenced by the racial stereotypes which was escalated by a Chinese exclusion act. The first question to ask is why was this film made? Why did Wong choose to make her first ever film to be about this? Why did she choose to make a film about the East and the West culture? From her biography, it states her background. As an American-born Chinese, Wong's long residence in Oakland and her Chinese heritage enables her to weave both Chinese folklore and her transnational life experiences into the script. So, she has lived the American experience as a Chinese woman. She definitely is aware of the racial issues in America. She knows the cartoons. She knows the oppression. And more importantly, she knows that her heritage is being terribly represented in America. So, why did she make this? Well, in her biography, it states, she is determined to introduce the word Chinese motion pictures with some of the customs and manners of China. So it's simple. She just wants to share her culture. She wants to showcase that through the clothes, the furniture, the decorations, the environment. She wants to shed light on the Chinese culture through cinema to show the Western world that this is their representation within America and not this. Her motivations for this film were the racial oppression that was escalated by a Chinese exclusion act, which is all put together in a romantic story showcasing the beautiful Chinese culture. 